because now you're going to be who you were fighting. I know. What's that about? Um, I think uh, the, way, the, the third season is going to be, again, just like the first and second season were to each other, completely different. And um, we've got this whole new dynamic, right, of, of Nikita heading division with Ryan, and, and again, the team being together, but sort of like under this, you know, this this house of, 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 of you know, it's, it's really, a, it's still a government agency, right? So um, I think, Nikita, this is going to be a little tough. It's going to be sort of, we're going to have a honeymoon period in the beginning, I think, where she's sort of you know, has the thing of, well, I'm not looking over my shoulder anymore, that's nice, you know, I can I can go and have a meal or, you know, do things that you've never seen Nikita do. But then at the same time, you know, I think shortly into the series, I think she's going to be a little bit like, she's kind of got a boss now. You know, Nikita's always been her own boss, so I think that may become an issue, you know. She's still got people to, she's got people to answer to now, and she, you know how she does things her own way, so... I don't know if that's going to be totally. Because she seemed like she wanted to have a personal life at the beginning of last season. Totally. So has she given up on that? No, not at all. And, and what's nice is we're gonna actually going to get into that. And um, we're going we're gonna to do something. We're going to kick this season off with something that you would never expect to happen in the first episode. Which, in true, you know, Craig style, uh, is sort of the way they do things. It's great. So we're talking like a wedding. Uh, oh God. <laughs> there's, there's a wedding on Nikita. I quit. No weddings, no babies. <laughs> no, unexpected. It should be. <laughs> no, yeah. Unless somebody like you know elopes like in a cool way. But I was just like, no, no one's getting pregnant and no one's getting married. No, this is not a soap opera. <laughs> but will there at least be shower scenes as promised? Um, oh yeah. <laughs> Started that. Craig that was, did that, that back in <laughs> um, Yeah, as somebody was talking about, but I think that happened. Like we were talking about on set, what the worst thing would be. And I think it started from there. Something like that. Yeah. So as as an actress, going through all these different seasons where things are totally different, has yeah. that made you grow as a person? Mm. What, do, what do you like about that? It's huge. Like, I didn't really understand how TV would change me as a as a performer. And, um, I've heard, I've read, you know, uh, interviews um, of, you know, film actors who've gone to TV and said, well, you know, it's so nice to grow a character over a, a, an amount of years. It's, it's a whole different experience because you don't, you never leave it behind, you know, it's always a part of you. And I, I, it sounded all, you know, good, but when you're actually doing it, it is exactly that. It's, it's sort of this long-term relationship you're in with, with another person that you're creating. And it's, it's this bizarre, very sort of fulfilling thing that, that you don't get from movies. I mean, obviously you get something else from movies, but yeah, I do love it. Now that she's kind of in a power position responsible for a government kind of hierarchy level, is her wardrobe going to change significantly? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> See, what's exciting about the wardrobe this year is that Nikita gets to wear everything now. You know, she's not now, she's on missions, but she's also in division, so she's you know, corporate as well sometimes, but then we get to see her own, maybe, because now she gets to choose, she gets to go, oh, I'll wear that jean and that t-shirt today, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> she might be going to a yoga class or a, or a coffee, and she's never done any of that, so, and then we're going to see her um, on missions, and we're also going to see her playing characters, you know, on missions, within missions, and so there's going to be a lot. We're, uh, the costume designer, let's, let's put it this way, is very excited about this season. <laughs> like, yeah, so. so is any of her style your style? Oh, kind of. I mean, I feel like you can't totally separate it. I mean, when I'm going to Iraq, <laughs> it's sort of like, I love that. And she always goes, are you over her? Are you over her? She always says that to me because I'm always going, you take that. That's for her. It's fun, but yes, I think that I definitely influenced her. But, but I also, at the same time, um, I'm very sort of like I, I, I'm very conscious of that. I don't want to, you know. And I'll even like my hair right now is so light, and people are like, "Are you gonna do that for the show?" I'm like, "No, this is for me because I get to be myself for two months." Right, nice highlight. Yeah, thanks. And then I gotta go back to to Nikita, so it's gonna change. But this is, you know, I, I try to differentiate. What about the living situation? Is she gonna live in division? Is she gonna want to set up house? No, she's she's got a house. We're not gonna see it right away, but her and Michael might have a house. Ooh. It might have a house. Pick a fence. A really high one with uh, with the barbed wire. <laughs>
Is it just for them, or are they going to be inviting everybody else to kind of stay? Well, we definitely, um, Craig and I discussed this. We thought it was so funny. We were like, I said, so, you know, living condition standards, this, that, and the other. And he said, well, yeah, you know, we'll figure it out. I go, they're not bunking. They're <laughs> a freaking couple. None of this, like, seven people to a house thing anymore. You know, that's not happening. He goes, no, no, that's not happening. I was like... It's not happening. He's like, it's not happening. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Because it's true. We've all been running. So we're stacked up in like one house, you know, whether it be three, four, you know, seven people by the end of the season. And now everybody's got to, you know, if Alex and Sean decide to do something together, they may have their own thing and we have our own thing. And it's less creepy. So this last season, uh, Nikita and Amanda kind of had, they almost killed each other a few times. Yeah, and now, um, you know, Amanda was gone for a little while and she's back. And now with Nikita kind of taking over the vision in a way, of course, I'm assuming Amanda's not going to be happy about that. Can you talk a little bit about the dynamic between the two of them? You're absolutely right. I mean, the thing about, speaking of, she walks in the room. Um, <laughs> the thing about Amanda being pissed off, um, that's, that's so scary. Because Amanda is not like Percy. In the third season, you know, Percy had an agenda, and Nikita got in the way. But Percy's agenda mattered more than Nikita did. He just wanted her out of the way. He was sort of pissed that she was always screwing things up for him. But it was a lot, it was very male. It was a lot less personal. It was just sort of like, get in my way, you're dead. If you don't, you know, whatever. This is two chicks now, right? And she is mad as hell. And her only objective is to hurt Nikita. And she's going to do that any way she can. She has no other agenda but to hurt Nikita. And that's very, very different from Percy. So she's a, she's a massive threat this season. Yeah. And the fact that she has Fox and Ari is a big thing, too. Very big. Is Nikita reporting to the government now? In, this, in the third season? Hmm. She is. <laughs> so they'll be a little more legit. And... Well, because Ryan Fletcher is now heading um, Division, you know, this is somebody that she she obviously has a great friendship with and she respects, but um, he's also very square. So I foresee some uh, a little bit of this uh, just because she's just so used to doing things her own way, and I, and I, and I, I think it's going to be a little hard for her to take direction from someone or for, for somebody to say to her, well, that, that, that's not the way we do things. This is the way we do things because I have to report back to the government. And Nikita's like, so? We you know, it's sort of that year, thing. Yeah. yeah, and so now it's, it's a different dynamic because she, 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 they really are working together. And he, he really is um, answering to the government. And there's something actually in season three that Ryan's holding back from Nikita that we'll find out uh, during the season that is is legitimately why he has to worry about the way she does things. Yeah, and she's so reckless that she's not going to listen to him. With the vision not as the enemy anymore, you're even used to the tension level up here. Is it going to come down, or are they, are they mm. have found ways to oh, no. make it as exciting? We have some bad ass bad guys this season. It's so exciting. We're going to do a lot more standalone episodes, which is nice, and we're going to bring in you know some really quality guest stars again. We've got um, Devin Sawa back as a regular, which is really exciting, and Noah Bean, who plays Ryan Fletcher, is also a regular this season. So we've got like a nice group of boys, and we're going to have some some adversaries for them for sure, and, and for for my character as well. So and yeah, it's gonna be good. Can you talk a little bit what you did in your hiatus? Oh, I'll tell you what I didn't do. Rest. Did you see my photo? I we had it in our in our uh, iPad edition, and I saw it while I was here. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Have you guys seen the whale shark photo? You're going to die. <laughs> I died when I saw it. I did it. Um, I just got, I was in May Comic Con because I was um, in Cancun and I was diving with whale sharks off the coast of uh, Mexico because I work with a group called Wild Aid, uh, an endangered species protection group, and I'm on a big campaign to stop shark fishing. And so anyway, we did these photos um, of me diving with these whale sharks, you know, for publicity to bring attention to, to, the, to the cause. And they're, I mean, they're just, they're, really cool. it's, they're the biggest fish in the ocean. I mean, they're, they're brilliant. I mean, it's like, it's like swimming with a dinosaur. I mean, I, I haven't done that. <laughs> I have nothing to compare it to, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that's what it was like. So, but I, I haven't rested a lot, I have to say. I, I've been promoting, I've been, I've been around, I've been uh, internationally promoting the show, and they're sort of a season behind, and trying to forget what I know, and you know what I mean, still promote the show. So like, so season one, episode four, I'm like, season one, episode four. I'm like, ah, I'm like a ref 
first book. <laughs> I've forgotten all the details. Like so along with that, like how how far into the season do you know? Do you know what's going to happen? Do they have a plan for the end of the season, and how hard is that to kind of keep straight where you are now, mm. what you're shooting, and, and everything right now? I, I I know a lot. I know a lot. Um, but uh, season three, unlike season one and two, I, I don't I I don't even think Craig knows how the season's going to end. But I think that they're doing that on purpose. They kind of want to see. I think they're they're doing like a a little like writer's test, <laughs> like writer's workshop test to see um, if 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 giving a set goal at the end of the season restricts them during the year, or if they just kind of opened it up and let it flower and move in different directions. If we could get things that you know possibly didn't happen in the first two seasons. So the writers are excited. They're scared because <laughs> it's nice to have a goal. But um. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But but yes, I do know a lot, and I, I try to um, be present so that it doesn't affect sort of what's in front of me. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, you got to know certain things just to be able to deepen the experience. I was wondering, like, when did you know how the last season was going to end? Like, I knew for a long time. For a long time. <laughs> and what did you what did you think when you first learned how what was where the season was going to end and what that would mean for where um, the series could go after Well, I, I knew where we wanted to go in season three. So that means in season two, somebody big's got to die. <laughs> right? And and we already picked who we were losing. And and so that was known. Um, Craig and I had talked about it, and obviously the writers knew. But um, it, was, it was good. It was just sort of one of those things where... I knew what Nikita's arc was going to be and where she was going to end up emotionally and mentally at the end of season two, and that was going to set us up to for season three. And, and so, so those things are kind of important for me because this overarching—I mean, when you do 23 episodes, the arc is long. You know, arcs are supposed to do this. Ours do, you know, like sort of this, and it's—it's it's, it's hard to keep going at that level if I if I don't have my convictions in order. So, having done the role for so long, is there anything of Nikita that you, and have you learned anything from Nikita? Uh, I, I do, I do learn from her. She's incredibly patient, which I sort of admire. I mean, I love that she... There are things where she'll respond to a situation, and I'll, and I'll think, I'd be pissed off by now. You know, <laughs> I would have, you know, <laughs> I would have probably said something by now. But she, Nikita, lives in this place of sort of guilt slash compassion. And I think that her, she, she always puts other people first, and I, I really, I do, I do love that about her. And it's not just about putting herself first. To, to, to better the situation and make it feel good. I mean, she genuinely cares about people and about herself. And, and I, how can you not admire that? That's a, good, that's a good train. Going back earlier to what you said about the international view mm -hmm. of the show, um, so what, what do you think about that? Do you think that's really what saved the show? That's totally what saved the show. <laughs> <laughs> we have very low ratings in the U.S., you know? It's just sort of like, it's one of those things. I mean, listen, we're on Friday night, which is not exactly, that's not exactly a night people are like, oh my God, I'm going to buckle down on a Friday night at 9 o'clock. You know, people are out, you know. But then again, you know, a, lo a lot of our audience on a network like this is a younger audience that does buy episodes, download episodes, and, you know, watches things on their phone or their computer. So, again, it's, the, you know, it's, it's, so it's that. Um, but um, I always sort of felt like the key to the show that they had to find. And because we're not a show that's typical for this network, um, I didn't think it was going to happen right away that people were like, I'm tuning into the CW as a 45-year-old man. Like, I mean, that doesn't happen overnight. It just doesn't happen. Even though the show warrants that. But it's, you know, you've got this wall because it is marketed to younger women. And, um, but yes, I, I do. You're absolutely right. I believe that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I absolutely believe that. And, um, and I'm really appreciative of the international community for saving our ass. It's kind of great. Anthony, I need to take her, guys. <laughs> <laughs>